So in this project, I call it a recreation project, or we are going to be looking at a photographer that you choose and drawing inspiration from them. So what kind of style do they use? What kind of editing do they do? What kind of subjects do they choose? Do, are they a landscape photographer? Maybe they're a portrait photographer. Maybe they like to take pictures of objects for commercials. In this assignment, I really want you to be inspired. I want you to look at a photographer that you really admire and glean, inf glean inspiration. What do you like about them? And I really want you to look at their style and the stories that they tell in their photography. Are they getting up close in nature? Or were they telling stories of people going through hard times? Maybe they take pictures um, in really high contrast or they're trying to say something about society. I want you to look at how they edit. A lot of times we'll take pictures and then it's close and it's stylized in a way that maybe your photographer would, but you can edit it to maybe brighten it, saturate it, take pictures of, you know, in high contrast, change your editing. So make sure that you look at all of those things. What are they taking pictures of? Why were they taking pictures of those things? How did they edit their photo? And how are they composing their photos? And I want you to look at those things, draw inspiration, and really learn from them. Okay, I want to take you through this project and how it is a little bit different than the other projects you've completed so far in this class. And if you will have already seen this slide and read it, which it says this project is a little different, you'll be creating most of the slides. So you're going to be creating a presentation within this slideshow that I've already made you about a photographer. And then you're going, since you've studied their style, you understand the pictures that they take now, then you're gonna create and take photographs in the style of your photographer. So the reason why I want you to be inspired, I want you to understand and be observant of what other photographers do and why it is you like and gravitate towards certain photos. Maybe you really like black and white. Maybe you really like high contrast. Maybe you like really soft pictures. Maybe you like pictures of people. Maybe you like pictures of nature. I want to see why it is you gravitate, gravitate towards certain pictures that you do. So first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to pick your photographer to study. I have two articles here that list some ones that you can choose from that are appropriate for the class. But if you know a photographer, maybe you like a certain magazine or you like a certain photographer that you follow on social media or maybe you've studied someone already that you really enjoy and they're not listed here, as long as they are family friendly, they're appropriate for to be shown in school, then you can most likely choose them. So if you'll just send me a link to them or a an or an email at jpeterson at utahonline.org saying hey i really like this photographer can i use them i'll try and get back to you right away to say yes that's fine go ahead so you don't you are not limited to these particular photographers um but these are suggestions if you aren't sure where to start so now you're going to see some kind of blank slides this is, I have slides here that ask you certain questions and you need to fill in at least these slides, okay? So the first one's your title page. You can, if you right click on the picture, you can change the background. You can apply a layout, meaning, okay, I wanna make this a title page. I want it to look like this, or I want it to be bigger. You can also change the theme where you can make, it'll change the theme of the entire slideshow, which is completely fine in this instance. So if you want it to be black and white, you want it to have a pattern, you want it, whatever it is you want to do. So this is where you can get creative with how it is you want to present the photographer that you chose. So you need to have a title page. You need to introduce your artist if you want. And then you also need to Pick a photograph and you're going to critique that photograph. So answer a couple questions. What does it look like? Maybe some history of the photo, anything that you find interesting about that photograph. 
why did you like it, okay? If you wanna add more slides in here, you are, um, that's completely fine. You can, if, you're, if you've selected one of these slides, if you go to slide, you can add a new slide and it'll add a blank one. If you want more space, if you wanna add more photographs, if you wanna add more history, that's completely up to you. You can also um, right click within here and add a new slide too. But that is completely appropriate for this assignment. If you wanna add some slides, just don't delete any of the required slides. So again, when you pick a photograph, you'll put the title of the photograph if there is one, maybe when it was created, and then do a short critique on it. You've done a few critiques already. Critique is just explaining to me what, what makes the photograph interesting, composition, you can talk about editing, anything like that. Since this is a research-based type project, one of the most important pieces of your presentation is gonna be your Works Cited page. Works Cited is a part of MLA formatting, which you will see a lot when you're doing essays for English, but it's also a really important thing when we're talking about research and um, using images and using information that we are getting off of the internet. So in the previous slides, I said that you need to have at least two sources. Sources are at least two places where you got your information. Please don't use Wikipedia, but you can go online and you can definitely use just internet-based sources. That's totally fine. Just make sure that they're um, educational type sources. For example, I if I chose the photographer Dorothea Lang, I went online and I researched her name and her, and I found this great article and source on MoMA, which is Museum of Modern Art website. It has fantastic source of information about her. This has fantastic information on her life um, and why it is she took pictures of what she did. And it also has a ton of her work, all titled and dated and things like that. She took pictures of the Great Depression in the 1930s. And it has just a kind of a great representation of what it is she did. So you could go through here and then choose different photographs. Well, if you got everything from this website, you need to cite this as a source. Um, and so, on the presentation, it says it needs to be in MLA format and that you need to cite them. If you are not sure how to cite something, then I have a great tool for you. It's a free site generator to make sure that you give all the appropriate information to really cite a source and to give credit where credit is due. Okay, so I have it within the presentation and it takes you to this website right here where it has, you can choose your source type. So for example, this one was a website. You can then um, put your source in there and you can search for it and it's going to give you a citation. So it's gonna say, okay, I, I found the title, website title, URL, it couldn't find these pieces of information. If you can find them, you can add them, okay? So it'll ask you if, you know, if there's any authors or anything like that. Um, you can add that information and then you can complete the citation. And then what it will do is it'll spit out your bibliography, which you can copy. And you can, if you're using papers, for example, in English, you can do an insight citation, but for your citation purposes, you would copy that and then go back onto your um, website, or sorry, your presentation here, and you can cite your source. Let's say this was one of my first source, and then you just need to do your second source, okay? So this is just to make sure that you're giving credit where credit is due, showing where it is you got your information for your historical aspects of your photographer and wherever it is that you got your images. You might need to cite more if you went and searched online for um, 
different photographs or you wanted to do research on a particular photograph and you went there. So you need to have at least two, you might have more. The next part of the presentation is to do your photo recreation. So if I did my presentation on Dorothea Lange, I would want to take a photograph of a real life, you know, showing everyday, day-to-day -day life, and I would want to edit it in black and white. She did it a couple different styles, but a lot of them are um, high contrast and just show everyday life. And so, and so she did that editing there. If you have any questions, or again, you want to look at a different pho a photographer that I don't have listed on one of those articles, please let me know. You want to do three versions of your recreation. You can take three separate photos, three or three photos of the same thing, just from different angles, okay? And then you're lastly, you're gonna critique it. That's your part three, where you're gonna talk about how your photos capture the photographer's style, your process thinking, how you edited. So who are some of your favorite photographers? Why do you like what they do? Have you ever really paid attention to how they take their photos and why they're so cool? I'm really excited to see what it is, who it is that you come up with, and what it is that you come up with. And it's gonna be great. I'm so excited to see you get started on this one. And again, if you ever have any questions, please email me at jpeterson at utahonline.org.